It's time for Cerro Bash. This video is going to focus only on the next 10 seconds of the run. This is a huge sequence break that skips doing Misty Woods and Forlorn Ruins and just takes you directly into Cerro Pass to get Charge Jump. This trick, while very quick to execute, is quite difficult to learn and may take an hour or more, possibly several hours, before you get it once and longer than that to get it consistently. But once you have it under your belt, it's not too, too bad to do. It's just a bit of a difficult point learning the game. I like to joke that it's called Surro Bash, not only because it takes you into Surro Pass, but because of the Surro that it's going to bring you as a new player learning it. So here we are. We've made it back up to our save uh, by the Curl Rocks, and we're going to go over grab this energy crystal so that we have full energy, and then head over to the right. Now, first up here, I'm going to place a save that I would not normally recommend placing in runs, but I would recommend placing the save for the purposes of learning Zero Bash because it eliminates uh, part of the first bird manipulation. So what we're going to do is bash up on that first bird to not aggro the lower one, and then we'll just double jump into this wall, which gives us a wall run, and when you wall run up this wall to the top, without holding right, uh, you just perch on the edge here, which lets you place a save right next to these spikes. And this is convenient because, well, it only took, you know, five seconds to get over here. That's five seconds that you would have to do every time that you're going to die a hundred times or whatever, however many, doing this trick. So now what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate the two birds down below us to get us through this spike elbow here. Now, these spikes do four damage, so if you took the fifth health cell that I took in this guide uh, when I was back in Grove, you can take one hit from these spikes and still get through. You don't have any other required use for your health here, so it's not too bad to accidentally take damage and still succeed Cerro Bash. And there's even a method that I will show where you intentionally take damage to potentially make things a little bit easier. <clears throat> So let's uh, first just play through my recommended first Sorrow Bash method at normal speed. Looks easy enough, right? <laughs> let's, uh, let's break it down a little bit. So I'm going to play this video at a bit of a lower speed here. So first, we drop off to the left, just running off. We feather, bait both of the birds to attack us, and then head back towards the cliff. This causes one bird, the one below us, to go up past us straight, and the other one to just be off to the left. If you do this correctly, you'll see this bird position, and you'll be able to jump off the wall immediately and bash on the top bird. Do a bash straight up as the second bird off to the left starts to dash at you. It should go up to the corner here, and uh, if it bounces off the wall, then your movement was too slow, and the, the setup will not work correctly. You'll probably just die to the spikes. So assuming that you did this part okay, and you have this bird that followed you up to the corner, you're now going to head over to the right, feathering, and letting yourself get close-ish to the spikes. In this part, a common mistake players make is they try to stay too far away from the spikes, and the bird will dash upwards. This overhang that Ori is underneath right now is a big problem in Sorrow Bash, because if the bird hits it, you probably will not be able to succeed. So. What we want to do is wait to use our double jump until um, it will just put us kind of at the midpoint between the spikes and the overhang so that the bird follows a flat bash, where the bird follows a flat dash pattern towards us. So I jump pretty late, the bird back follows us straight. Now we bash the bird into the corner and 
we want the bird to be as high up in the corner as possible so that we don't instantly hit the spikes below when we bash off of it next. Now immediately after we bashed it here, we dash back towards the right to follow the bird using our air dash, jump at the bird, bash again. Now here we're bashing ourselves directly down into the spikes, but if you hold feather during this bash, you will immediately stop yourself and not actually be flung down, allowing you to avoid a terrible death. So this will send the bird up if it's high enough. We won't take damage from the spikes, and we'll be able to just hold the feather, jump to give the bird a little bit of time to get carried up by the bash, and then we'll do a charge dash bash at the bird. Now that movement I recommend doing uh, on its own, just so you can get the feel of the bash holding feather and then the charge dash up. Just do it on the birds as they're floating out in their default position, because it's easy to kind of forget and muddle those inputs when you're kind of panicking because it's your first time in the corner in the wild. And then uh, stepping back just a little bit, let's uh, get to here. This bash, you want to send yourself straight up. Uh, it may be tempting to angle yourself towards the area where you don't see spikes, but you get the best distance, the best chance of making it up there if you go straight up with this bash and then just hold left and double jump over there. Hold left and feather, that is. And that's the trick. So let's go through the method once again more quickly. And you're in there. Now this is one of many methods to do this trick, and I recommend probably re-watching bits of this, maybe slowing down one of the ones I uh, played at normal speed on your own, just to see how the little bits come together. But there's a lot of kind of little subtle movements to manipulate the birds properly, which it takes a while to properly understand, I believe. So I'm going to now go on and show some other methods of accomplishing the same thing. You can take your pick of which one you settle on, but I would recommend either this first one I did or this next one with an intentional damage boost. So back at the save we made on the ledge earlier, we're going to do the same bird bait we did before. I'll just play this method in its entirety once and then we'll break it down a little. All right, so let's play things at a bit of a lower speed with a couple pauses. So exactly the same as the first method, we're going to fall off, we're going to bait both birds with a feather at about this position so that we get the bird below us to go above and the other bird to stay to the left. Then we bash straight up on the top bird as the other one dashes towards us. It doesn't bounce off the wall, which means we're in a good position. Now, unlike the last method, we still need to um, bait the bird to do a flat dash after us here, but we're not going to wait around and catch the bird and do a, a bash dash ourselves. We're just going to keep going to the right and bait it into doing a second flat dash. So we just feather, double jump to keep our height in between the spikes and the overhang, not too high, not too low, and then we'll dash into the spikes ourselves. And then after we take damage from the spikes, we jump off and get ready to catch the bird with a bash. If you don't catch the bird in time, it'll either just kill you or run into the spikes and kill itself, both of which are fatal. Now the input is exactly the same. You bash the bird upwards, you yourself downwards while holding feather, do a double jump, and then charge dash bash the bird, bash up, and you are in there. Next up, I'm going to go through both of these methods in a more run-friendly setting. Because our energy is in high demand in this segment, placing an extra safety save up to the right there is not too desirable. So just doing the same kind of thing, but from the save that we had placed before by the curl rocks is a little bit better. Let's take a look at that. 
here we are back up at the first save I made up by the Kura Rocks, except I've already picked up the energy to the left because showing that again would be a little redundant. So like we did before, to get over to the ledge we're going to dash this first bird, bash up, and dash over the top so that we don't aggro the bird below us. Um, now unlike before we're not going to stop on this ledge, we're just going to hang out on the wall for a bit and then jump back to aggro the two birds. And this is essentially the same as the bait from being on the ledge and running off. It's just done a little bit quicker and a little bit more kind of loose since you're moving more throughout the entire time. So we get the same position, the, the lower bird goes straight up, we catch it and we bash up to let, make the other bird follow us. So let's just wind that back and then I'll play the full thing at normal speed so that you can get a look of how it goes. It's essentially after that point the same as the first method shown. Here is the damage boost method, but played from the save over on the left. Now I'm going to show a couple variations on Surobash, this time looking at some one bird methods for getting in rather than two bird methods. Now I would recommend still sticking with the two bird method for your first few Sorrow Bashes, but these one bird methods are faster, and some people might find this approach a little bit easier than doing the double bird manipulation. So let's take a look at this first at normal speed, using a double bash to get a single bird into position for Sorrow Bash. So rewinding and breaking it down a bit, we'll play a little bit slower and with some pauses. So we head out and we aggro the bottom bird immediately. Bounce off of the wall so that the bird comes up past us. And it doesn't really matter if the bird hits the wall here, we're going to force its position to be correct using a double bash. Uh, this essentially skips going over the first bird and coming back. It lets us just immediately aggro the second bird and force it into a good position. So we're going to do a double bash here, sending ourselves at a slightly different angle than the bird, because if you follow the bird directly, you'll be in its hitbox when the bash immunity ends, and you'll take damage, which will mess up your position and hurt. So now, we're kind of in a familiar position here, wouldn't you say? This is the same kind of spot that you wind up in uh, from doing the two bird method. We have a bird that's ready to chase us horizontally along these spikes, and the rest of this is completely the same as before. Let the bird come towards us, catch it with a bash, bash it up towards the corner, chase it with a dash and a jump, bash it up, charge dash at it, and we are into Zero. Now I'm going to show a method that's faster still, one that removes the double bash from the previous method, replacing it with a charge dash, and pushes the bird into the corner a bit faster with a series of dash bashes rather than waiting for the bird to chase us. This method has its issues, one of them being that it's probably the most difficult among the ones that I've shown here, and thus I really wouldn't recommend it for a beginner, but just for completeness's sake, I want to show this because it's more feasible than double bashing on a controller consistently, so it may be a method that you would like to settle on later on. So let's watch it in its entirety first and then we'll break it down. Okay, so playing a bit more slowly with pauses. So just like the double bash method, we want to get over to the wall and bounce off of the wall ourselves before the bird gets up to us. Then we're going to catch the bird and force it into a good position. Now instead of double bashing, 
we're going to do a charge dash bash at the bird right here and catch it. Now, if we were to bash to the right, the bird would get too far away from Sorrel, and we would just fall to the spikes and die. So we have to force the bird into the position we want, and this part is a little bit tricky. You need to make it so the bird goes down towards the spikes on the first bash, such that you can send it up away from the spikes on the second bash without having it hit the roof so that it's high enough in the corner. This is a little bit different than the other baits because you can't send the bird as far by bashing it as the bird would normally chase you if it dashed after you on its own. So I angle the bird slightly down, dash after it, grab it again, angle it slightly up, dash after it, grab it again. Now here, this is slightly different as well, because the bird does not have enough health to survive a charge dash hit. Now, when enemies are in this state, you will sometimes be able to charge dash and bash them, and you will bash their dead body, basically, which is what's going to happen here. And sometimes the charge dash will kill them and the bash does not go off. The reason for this is because Ori moves so fast when charge dashing that you can just tear through the bash radius and hit them directly before bash has a chance to update and recognize that you're able to bash something. And when you get the bash off the dead body of something, that just means that you were able to bash basically the last possible frame, like the frame they died, you got the bash off anyways. Now fortunately for us, this is consistent based on the distance between you and the enemy, and the further you are away, the more likely it is to work. So you need to delay long enough after releasing this bash, and do it at a consistent angle, such that the bird is at a consistent distance away from you meaning you'll have a consistent result with your bash charge dash. But if I were to do it, you know, a couple frames earlier this charge dash, then I might hit the bird and not get the bash off. Same with a couple frames later. Although at distance, uh, it's more likely that it'll work. And this bird is reasonably far away. It's only when you're very close to things that this problem tends to occur more often. Now the bird's dead, we're bashing. And a, another effect of this bash is when bashing off the dead bird, uh, your bash just does not take you as high. You're just a little bit lower. I think probably because the charge dash maybe knocks the bird back a little bit, and that lets your bash go higher uh, when you're bashing off of a live bird, but when you bash off the corpse, it doesn't move. So you have to be a little bit higher in the corner. You can see I barely make this jump here. And that's why it's so important back here to do this downwards angled bash dash and then the upwards angled bash dash because your height here is essential to actually complete this method of zero bash. Um, you can easily get positions with this method where the bird is high enough in the corner so that you don't die to the spikes but it's still too low for you to get up to the spikes at the top. So that's just something to be aware of. And again, I highly encourage you to start learning Zero Mash with a two bird method. But if you want to try out some of these, I figured I would just include them for completeness. Good luck on your Zero Mash, and I'll see you in the next video.